Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget BCW5 on checkout. Today we are having a little bit of an interesting episode where we're going to be working on the IS200 and then we're going to be taking it to do a motor carner with the New South Wales WX Club. Today we're going to be replacing the master cylinder in the hydraulic handbrake assembly. Uh, there's a few reasons behind that and while we're doing that we're actually going to be discussing uh, hydraulic principles uh, in, in addition to mechanical principles or mechanical advantage and sort of go into it a, a little bit more so you guys can understand how to properly spec your hydraulic handbrake bore size or even just having a general understanding of how things like hydraulic clutches work, brakes work and power steering work. So um, I've actually built a few little sort of demo rigs and I've also got a couple of hydraulic handbrakes and master cylinders on the bench that we're going to have a little bit of a look at before we dive into the car. Uh, once we get the master cylinder swapped over and the brakes bled, we're going to the track. So the basic aim of the day is to replace uh, this existing master cylinder with this one, which is a uh, 0.625 inch or 16 millimeters approximately bore. So that the, the measurement on the side of the master cylinder actually refers to the bore diameter. Um, this one is a three quarter inch one or a 19 millimeter one approximately. I'm trying to get conversion measurements right so kind of everyone understands what's going on. Um, basically the reason for that, for going for a smaller bore is actually to give me more throw um, on, the, on the lever. So what I've actually found is I'm not getting full mechanical advantage because by the time I've actually pushed enough fluid with the larger bore master cylinder, it's only got a, a very small amount of travel. Uh, and, and I just feel that that position is not correct. And actually having dry, driven Adam Sylvia with this same master cylinder in it, it actually has a much better feel um, as well as jumping in, and in the passenger seat with Jimmy uh, in his S13. You can see he's got a lot more pull on his hydraulic handbrake compared to me. Um, and yeah, as I said, you're kind of not getting the, uh, the correct position. Um, but off the, on the topic of that, I've made these little uh, demo rigs. So these are just literally plastic syringes and uh, I've basically built something here which shows, it's a, it's a kind of an over-exaggerated version of what we're doing here. But uh, this is a 50 milliliter uh, syringe and this is a 10 milliliter syringe. So you can actually see very little movement in this larger syringe here completely extends the smaller syringe here. So what I actually want to do is go to something like this, which these, these are both the same bore size because there's very little syringes available where I went this morning because I did this this morning. Uh, but basically you see, you start to get even, even travel the more you match your bore sizes. Um, now when you're doing braking systems and clutch systems, you kind of want to do the inverse of this and, and this can be the sort of system that you end up with with uh, having quite a, a large master cylinder in comparison to your slave cylinder size. This also ties in with the lever positioning on your either your clutch pedal, your brake pedal, or your hydraulic handbrake, because normally in automotive systems, you're, you're actually combining hydraulic principles with uh, mechanical advantage. So having your, um, your lever and your fulcrum points in different positions will also actually affect how your, um, your master cylinder operates depending on how much lever stroke you actually have. Um, obviously the hydraulic handbrakes have a ton of movement in them. So uh, we want to take full advantage of the, the throw on these. And by, by going back to a smaller master cylinder, it's going to allow that. So I uh, hope you guys have kind of got a bit of an idea on what I've been talking about now that you can visually see with both of these rigs. Um, and yeah, so going to from the larger one, which gives you a lot of a lot of our uh, fluid movement with very little input on either your pedal or your lever. Going back to something like this, which obviously balances the movement out. This, this particular sort of demo is actually one to one, both the syringes are the same size. However, going from a little bit, a little bit smaller to the same size caliper is gonna give us um, more throw on the handbrake, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's get into it.
You may be wondering why we're actually changing the brake pads. Well, um, these Winmax W3s are quite a good circuit pad, but they don't bite particularly well from dead cold. Um, so we're actually going back to this uh, Forza pad. I think it's just like a FP1 or whatever. Um, it's more of a like a street track pad. So it will handle some heat, but it should um, grab a lot earlier and a lot colder on a hydraulic handbrake. Now, being that this is a motor car, you don't get laps, warm up, anything like that. It'll literally, you can warm the engine up obviously, but there's no brake warming up or anything like that. So um, yeah, it's actually really good to put just some basic street pads in the back of the car especially if you have a hydraulic handbrake. Um, most factory type cars uh, with this drum style handbrake, I'd definitely recommend to leave the stock shoes in it. Um, Project Near do make aftermarket shoes, which work well in some drift cars, but um, for motor car and stuff, you really want something that's gonna bite super early and it doesn't have to handle high heat applications um, because like I said, you're really only on and off that handbrake for a minute. Um, the car's also not doing high speeds. Normally you're only seeing sort of up to 50 or 60 kilometers an hour in a motor car. Um, so yeah, these these sort of more basic pads are definitely not gonna be a problem. So uh, yeah, we're gonna whack these back in, put the wheels on, then we are gonna hit the track. Just putting the steamrollers back on. Some like engine or uh. um, mega dead, super dead. Well, today's been a bit of a bust. I literally got, well, not even a full run and the car started making a pretty angry metal noise. Um, at first I thought it was in the engine, but now getting it on the trailer, a few guys helped us push it on, thanks to the guys from the Direx Club for that. And yeah, hitting the starter motor, you can hear the ring gear spinning, but the engine's actually not turning at all. So what I'm thinking is actually that the ring gear, either the ring gear's come off or the flywheel's come off, but it really wasn't making enough noise for me to think the flywheel's just fallen off the crank. Um, but we're, 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 de we're definitely done for the day, so um, I'm pretty much going to pack it up and going to pull it apart later. 
a um, little bit deflating because this is kind of the first motorsport event that we've had out of lockdown. So um, yeah, a bit of a bummer to not even get one run out of it. But it is also a bit of a silver lining in that if we do go to do another event, we know that this thing's now sorted and, and hopefully we don't um, see this issue going forward. But we're gonna pack it up and go home. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.